Hey, hey, we're back. Forecast already, and I know the update is actually only tomorrow, but uh, it's tomorrow, not today. But before we do the update, I actually still have like a companion mission to do. <laughs> so we will go get to that with uh, like a Unilay's companion mission. Doesn't really have much time to do it on the weekend, so yeah. But we're doing it today. So yeah, sorry for like being missing out on like the stream for a week again, but yeah. Had a little bit more stuff to do last week. Uh, but yeah. Let's just get straight into it. We've already done like the event sword practice stuff for March. So yeah. I'm also already eagerly waiting here a little... to roll for facial. Because I've already been like farming a trace material. <laughs> because I'm definitely gonna get, get her like an Aussian Foxian. Why should I not put for her? I'm a Fox Ever too, since March all. started learning sword play from Yenqing and Yunli. Her voice has been absent on the express. I wonder how well she's progressing. Where has she been these days? This is also like guarding her training. She already went through that though. Maybe it's Miss Mar Seven. She didn't turn up for practice. <laughs> Why is that like stages saying fight? <laughs> Come on, Yunli. <laughs> Um, I took a look for her. <laughs> we can't find much. We can only take out a legal guardian. Since when did we become Marta's legal guardian? He's just pushing off the responsibility to Yang and Himiko, of course. She's not my child, thank you very much. <laughs> when did, okay, when did March... I shouldn't question this, I guess. I just shouldn't question it. Um, no, I don't want to go to the Panic County with all the Dream Flux Reef stuff. Uh, if we do want to do this quest, thank you. Well, hello, dear Yuli. Ah! Knife is just showing you as well. There you are. I was looking around before you got here. I already looked everywhere, but March 7th is nowhere to be found. <sighs> nope. Let's just assume she successfully skipped class. Actually, she's been quite diligent in her swordplay practice and hasn't taken many breaks lately. I think she deserves a day off. Still real, though. Uh, besides, I used to skip classes even more than her back when I was still learning. If I was in the mood, I could train for three days straight. But if I wasn't in the mood, none of my seniors could find me. Oh, I can relate to you. So, <laughs> I can <laughs> understand where she's coming from. <laughs> Ever would have... More of a choice if I can skip stuff or not. I will definitely act more like her. Ah, <laughs> uh, don't make excuses for her. Since you're here, let me treat you to some tasty food. I'm more interested in you today. Oh. Let's walk and talk. I wouldn't even deny that I'm so from her, to be honest. Chad told me there's tasty food in Arum Alley. 
Let's go there. Table for two, please. All right, come on in. What would you like? Well, we'll have one of everything on the menu. Is she cutting this type? Higher menu? Hmm. Do you think it'll be enough? Oh, don't worry. There are two of us. Well, then I'll time. start making a few dishes, and if you need more, just let me know. Thank you. Mm. No, I've thought about it. She deserves a day off. Is there a look for her, though? We don't even know why she went on, but... Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, not too much, actually. Grandpa said to about. never be stingy when it comes to making friends. So, how big is your appetite? Uh, you usually can eat... Eat about the average or more. Depending on the day. Don't go to the second answer. Then eat to your heart's content. To be more precise, I'm interested in your sword. You have a baseball Yen Ching bat. mentioned you before. He said that you're not to be underestimated, and that your weapon has a unique shape. So I've always been curious about your sword. How the weight is distributed, what material it's made of, whether it contains any special ingenia, and what kind of sword techniques you use. I mean, for one... The baseball bat is just one random baseball bat we found out of our spur station. Space station. The lens we got, we just... Kind of got randomly? When... Um, how was it called again? And the end of, of per preservation based on us. And... Our third weapon is just a head. <laughs> Literally, it's just a head. Uh, seriously? A bat? Just the opposite. This is fascinating. You place your beloved bed, your most trusted companion, perhaps second only to the likes of March 7, Dan Hang, Val, Timiko, and Pom Pom before you know these case. You could have just said the other two so It really is a baseball bat. Grandpa said that a sword doesn't have to be constrained by its shape, so in a sense, your bat is a sword too. He also said that a weapon mimics its master, so your bat actually reflects your habits and nature, you know? So simple and blunt. Let me guess. You're someone who doesn't follow the rules, enjoys improvising, and can handle yourself well against tough foes. Am I right? Okay. I would have in interpreted it differently. Is it just heard? <laughs> Do we always follow the rules? Uh no. I don't follow the rules as I deem them stupid. I mean, I do like to set up like guides and rules up here uh, just to have, to have something like to orient myself on. But if I deem a rule stupid, then I don't follow it. Amazing, right? But you always say something silly like rules are made to be broken. Well, okay, the character actually does know that. <laughs> I've come across so many sword wielders who acted all righteous and moral, but were really just liars. Their swords always told the truth, though. 
They told me that their wielders were just a bunch of frauds who relied on their divine weapons for everything. I've hunted down hundreds of swords like this so far, and every single one of them has been melted down. Mm. Why is she taking swords and yes. melting them? But only for those who cross the line. Melting their swords is my way of protecting those weapons. Okay. But just looking at a sword is not enough. Grandpa always says, words and expressions can be deceiving. But in a fight to the death, a sword's movements never lie. The war dance is just around the corner. You'll be participating, right? I mean, I would wish to. Miss yeah. Yun Li, for talented sword masters like you, the war dance is a perfect opportunity to show off your skills and make a name for yourself. Do we not advise? But for people like huh. him, who have already made significant contributions to the Sienjo, they maybe don't need to prove themselves on the war dance stage. I still would like to fight, though. It has been a while, Mr. Nameless. And I do have a name, you though. are. <laughs> Thank you for your introduction, Mr. Nameless. I'm Shi Kuei, and I work in the Palace of Astrum as the secretary for the Helmmaster. I apologize for interrupting your conversation. I happened to hear you discussing the war dance. And since this person is an old acquaintance, I thought I'd come and say hello. Yes, with the war dance approaching, many guests from afar are pouring in. Mr. Pavo here is one of them. He's from the distant planet Kalevala. Mr. Pavo's planet recently joined the Pan Cosmic Trade System. He brought his delegation here this time not only for business, but also to return something that belongs to the Xianzhou. Oh? Miss Shikwe, the word gift is perhaps more fitting than return. While it did once belong to the Sienjo, we faced many tribulations to be able to deliver it here, so it should be considered a gift. It still belonged to the Sienjo, though. <laughs> well, okay. I'm not gonna question it. I apologize for my poor choice of words. Mr. Pavo's delegation brought a legendary Sienjo sword that had been lost for centuries. General Huayan plans to personally thank them at the Palace Astrum and present the sword as a prize to the champion of the war dance. Mr. Pavo and I were actually on our way there. There will be a sword handed out though. The one the not of the not of the the Yajing, but the other the general of the other thing that's there crafted himself. Since you two were talking so enthusiastically about the war dance, maybe you'd be interested in joining us at the Palace of Astrum? Sure, I guess. Why not? Do we first eat, though? <laughs> nice to meet you both. The journey to the Sienjo Lafu wasn't an easy one, but the scenery here is worth it. It's completely different from my homeland. Once the formalities at the Palace of Astrum are finished, I'll find a quiet spot in this street and plant a seedling. And then my mission will be complete. But would you want to plant something here? <laughs> the Sword of Heroes will finally be returned to its rightful owners. I couldn't be happier. Him wanting to plant a seed here kind of sounds... suspicious in a way. To be honest, it's kind of weird and random thing to do, especially in in this game or world, you could say. Since like, yeah, it's just like no, like anything you mentioned for like this. Oh, you're interested in my home planet? That's great. Your Excellency is welcome to visit us at any time. Even though the trade route just opened, it still might take around 200 system hours to get there from Pier Point. But our planet is really great. 
Yeah, sure, it's a bit cold, and the food is a bit repetitive, and our houses aren't as fancy as those on Pier Point, but that doesn't matter. We've discovered massive supernium deposits, and we're on the path to prosperity. We just got lucky when it came to that. Oh, you mean the Mieka Kivesa? It's an incredible sword. That weapon helped the legendary heroes of my homeland slay demons, and is highly revered. It also has the power to choose monarchs. All the ancient kings of Kalevala received a sign from the sword, showing they were worthy to rule the land. According to tradition, each monarch would plunge the sword into a stone, and only a hero recognized by the sword could pull it out and ascend to the throne next. Why are so many games making reference to this like King Arthur stuff with the pulling a uh, sword from a stone? Uh, <laughs> this is producing so many doing this. Well, those are just legends from the past. No one today has witnessed it firsthand. Well, uh, times have changed, and now that we have a council in place, the idea of a sword crowning a king has become a joke. Besides, it wasn't a native of Kalevala who last pulled out the sword and recognized its connection to the Sienzhou ship. It was a visitor from afar. Hmm. While this sword holds great historical significance for Kalevala, it doesn't truly belong to our world. The old timers on council had a heated debate about whether to return the sword. They eventually unanimously agreed to let the Mieka Kivesa return to where it truly belongs. That's the best possible outcome. I guess. Wonderful. It's an honor to have so many people witness the sword's homecoming. Let's head to the Palace of Astrum together. Hmm? I know, right? Thanks to March 7th skipping class, we get to join in on the fun. Grandpa always asks me to go look at swords with him, but he hasn't said anything about this one. It's really weird. But now that we're invited, let's go and check it out. This answers more and more suspicious, really. So I personally would just more go along just to see what's Good up with that. And in a case of the nameless act, then something should go wrong. But okay. Let me stay here a little longer in this body. There you are. Come on. Let's go to the ceremony together. Hmm. Oh. Why is that trendy here? Please allow me to offer a sincere <laughs> compliment to my fair lady. Your beauty is as pure as a snow-white iris. It's also finally voiced again for once. <laughs> Well, if it isn't my dear friend, glad to meet you again. Uh, who is this weirdo? Uh, I mean, um, who is this knight? I am Argenti, a member of the Knights of Beauty. I was invited as a part of the Kalevala delegation to escort the legendary Mieka Kivesa back to the Sienjo. How? How come this is, that he's like all over the place? Really? May I have the honor of knowing your name? Uh, my name is Yun Li. What a beautiful name! I wonder if you have ever heard the holy name of the pure and flawless goddess Adrilla. Probably oh, not. you're here, Yun Li. Didn't expect you to be so well informed. Well, now that you're here, don't forget your manners. Mm, manners, manners. Come on, you won't find another granddaughter as polite and well behaved as me. Uh, yeah, about <sighs> that. Well, just remember this is a very serious ceremony. Sorry for keeping you waiting, Mr. Pavo. Now, let the sword gifting ceremony begin. 
Before the uh, ceremony officially commences, I want to express my gratitude to the Knight Argenti. Thank you for enlightening us about the sword's origin and for escorting it here safely so that we may complete this ceremony. So he pulled it from the sword. He knew that it was of sciential origin. And still, why is it still all over the place? Lastly, he was in Paniconi with us for whatever reason. Before we met him on the Astro Express, by getting swallowed by a big bug. That was a thing. Uh, okay. Yuri is all over the place and also like with the weirdest connections to us. Or with like the weirdest kind of relevance to us. But they also helped out. I do not know how On behalf of the Kalevalan delegation, I, Pavu Kalastaya, am here to return the legendary Mieka Kifesa to the Sienjo Alliance, its rightful homeland. Okay, uh, and next to Loja, Argenti for me is like the biggest mystery when it comes to like characters in specific. Loja is still a big mystery when it comes to his character and Argenti as well. Popak. I'm truly grateful for Kalevala's noble act of returning the sword and for the Knight of Beauty's chivalry. Now, as we gather here on the Sienjo Lahu, I officially welcome the sword back to its homeland. Mieka Kivesa. It's a fitting name for a sword with such a legendary past. Also, isn't this the same box he used to await? Peter. He brought this box for it to be a gift for a sword he forged, which is supposed to be coming. I thought he forged it. I still remember the name engraved on this sword the day it was forged. Guyin. It was forged by Hang Guang, a craftsman from the Ju Ming's Pyro Jaya Forge. Why is it saying Pyrogyre Forge when, uh, when it says Flame Gear Forge? Huh. Okay, he didn't craft it himself. Interesting. Wait. Uh, uh, Hangguang? Although its blade is worn and cracked, its essence remains as resilient as the Sienjo Cloud Knights. All it needs is some repairs and polishing the skilled craftsman of the Artisanship Commission to regain its former glory. I've decided to entrust this sword, Gu Yin, to the Lawfu Artisanship Commission for restoration. Furthermore, it will serve as the prize for the champion of the Lawfu War Dance. This sword will be wielded against abominations to protect our homeland and live up to the mission of the Kalevalan delegation that returned it so far away. Thank you, General. It is an honor for Kalevala. Now, esteemed knight and delegation members, please head to the Artisanship Commission, where... No! This sword was forged by Hongguang. Yun Li! These esteemed guests have brought back your father's last work. Where are your manners? Oh, uh, I didn't realize this sword was actually forged by your father. Returning it to its rightful owner is, uh... Grandpa, give me that cursed sword right now! I'll melt away the remnants of that man's curse once and for all! Don't be rude, you me. Apologize to our esteemed guests from afar. I'm Get sorry. Your misgivings about their father, I guess. Hey there, you kid. Welcome to chat. I'm sorry for making a scene, but I have to melt down this cursed sword. I won't let it fall into anyone else's hands. Yun Li, please, go for now. 
It's going all right for me. <sighs> this is exactly why I didn't want you and Lee to know about this. I didn't want to create trouble, but trouble found its way here anyway. Perhaps it really is divine intervention. Could you please keep an eye on Yun Lee for me? Guess we got a babysitter. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just gonna be nice. That is a tall order, but I'm counting on you. I apologize for the unfortunate interruption. Let us move on with the ceremony. In a firm plea of Rayan, you temporarily depart from the palace of the Astrum to follow Yunli. Unless I'm mistaken, Yunli should be around here somewhere. Mm. Nothing in this report makes mm. sense. Oh. I didn't write an NPC. <laughs> send you to look for me <laughs> I bet he did just didn't want to say like was well, I mean, because it's more like it's to me like the dumb response in the moment but <laughs> really <laughs> thank you just so you know I'm here just waiting for the perfect moment to snatch that sword. And once I have it, I'll melt it down before anyone can react. Don't even think about stopping me. No one can stop me. Mm. Yeah, Grandpa no sent you here. Surely he doesn't want you to help me. Have you heard of cursed swords? That sword is one. Mm. You've clearly heard a lot of folk tales, but that's not the kind of cursed sword I'm talking about. Then how is the cursed, cursed sword? Certainly. Let's anyone, even a complete novice wields it with insane skill just by holding the hilt even the weakest rookie can brandish it with incredible speed and strength okay no wonder that like that people who wield it will be the monarch well it's like so if it's like more of a warden torn planet this would like be the primary Aspect you charge a monarch by, to be honest, fighting strength. Mm. So, how can I go by? I'm one? not joking around, <laughs> and I'm not making up some crazy story. While a cursed sword grants instant abilities to its wielder, it comes at a cost. It's like continuously adding fuel to the forge with each swing the sword drains the wielder's blood and essence day by day the fuel will run out leaving nothing but an empty husk <laughs> soon enough it will no longer be a person wielding a sword but a mindless killing machine Consumed by bloodlust and murderous thoughts. Yep, that really sounds oddly familiar. To I us. wonder if you've ever heard of a creature called a Heliobus. It loves to feed on human emotions and memories, and excels at manipulating its hosts. There was a lunatic swordsmith who infused metal blades with Heliobi. 
as he was obsessed with turning weapons into living things. And this is how cursed swords were made. I know, I shouldn't have caused a scene at the sword gifting ceremony. But I've thought this through. If I don't make a fuss now, that cursed sword will cause a whole lot more trouble. So it's better if it's me causing the trouble. By the way, Fair enough. aren't they supposed to be taking the sword to the Artisanship Commission for repairs? Why haven't they come out yet? Any ideas? <sighs> Looks like they're not going to show up here. I'll just head straight to the Artisanship Commission. It doesn't matter why Grandpa chose that sword. I won't let it fall into anyone else's hands. Though if there are likes of Hoho around, I don't think we would have to have much trouble actually dealing with a cursed sword. To be honest. And yes, there's, there's like there are already established ways with like Tail and Hoho as a prime example of stuff like that able to work out. I'll track down every single sword he forged and melt them down one after another. Just like I've been doing all these years. I have to go now. Is she planning to sneak into the Artisanship Commission and steal that sword? Maybe I should keep an eye on her. To definitely sure. The Artisanship Commission is so big. Where could she be? Just a while ago, a girl came up to me, all fierce and demanding directions. She said she's a member of the Artisanship Commission. Do you know her? No idea who she is. If she really works here, how can she not know her way around? Oh, I see. That explains it then. Hmm? Explains what? It explains <laughs> nothing at all. She said something like, I'm a member of the Artisanship Commission. Where do you keep your precious stuff? I got scared and pointed her toward Master Gongshu's warehouse, where he stores his arumatons. Yeah, wrong direction. Wait, why did you give her directions? What if she's planning to steal something? Where else? Like I said, she was headed straight for the warehouse, where all the valuable arumatons are. Yeah, that place is filled with Master Gongshu's precious arumatons. I bet they'll give her a hard time. Why would you point it to dangerous arumatons, though? I don't understand his like reasoning for it, but all right. I can have to use that. Eh, I guess it's just one way or something. And you know why can I not use this? Ah, because this one has to be turned. Uh, forget about it. Then I will just teleport. What are you doing here? Look, if I get into trouble, it's my problem. I don't want to drag you into it. Fine. Let's smash these metal cans first. Then we can talk. All right. Target sighted. All units on alert. Like fire until everything burns to ashes! Set to the sea, some place! Eternal. I'm scared! Get them! Stay in step. Let's improvise. Lower your weapon. Brazen it. This is more fight to live! There's more to life. So 
this Take your is position. the warmth of life. Attack detected. Are you showing yourself? The mood is set. Let the show begin. Farmers will break stuff. Set to the sea, so play! Firefly type four. Fight to live! Grace and elegance. Great teamwork. Fiends or devils, I'll crush them. Every petal all will be swept away by the wind. <laughs> Some value, I suppose. Get there. Bye bye. That was the last of them. Thank you for helping me out. This place is heavily guarded, but there's nothing but arumatons. Where is the arsenal? You got missed that. <laughs> Seems like not even those craftsmen know where the arsenal is. At this rate, we won't find anything. And Grandpa might take me away before I can do anything. You're not really here to help me. You're here to stop me, right? Mm. I mean, kind of this. I wouldn't say it's not her problem, but yeah, I'm also not really particularly here to stop her, so. <laughs> I'm just along for the ride, really. No. It's not. Grandpa made a promise to the delegation, and going back on his word would tarnish his reputation and make things difficult for the Lofu. But leaving that curse sword here will also make things difficult for the Lofu. So all things considered, <laughs> the best outcome is for me to melt that sword down and take all the blame. You probably think I'm being impulsive and unreasonable, right? She's a bit obsessed with curse words, that's true. No, really. Do I come across that way? <laughs> well, I guess I can't deny it. You're sharp. Yeah. You could say it's a sensitive topic. <laughs> Look, What's yours? I owe you an explanation. But this isn't the best place to talk. We need to find somewhere else. Let me be clear, though. I'm still pretty riled up. This... This is just a temporary break. I already told you about Guyan. The sword that was returned during the ceremony. It's a cursed sword with a heliobus inside. And Hong Guang, the swordsmith who forged it, is my father. You already know that I rarely yeah. mention his name to anyone other than Grandpa. Maybe, like you said, I've been avoiding having to talk about him. But as long as my mission to hunt down cursed swords continues, it's impossible to avoid the topic forever. For some reason, I feel like I can open up to you. You wouldn't be the first one. Honestly, <laughs> I don't remember much about him. All I know is that the Pyrogyre Forge used to be a bustling place. With people from all over coming to get one of his swords. They called him the greatest master craftsman since Yingxing. They yeah, always say Pyrofire Forge in like the uh, in like the voice acting. But the text can really say it's different. Which I feel like it's weird. Yeah, this is 
a cute, cute artwork of uh, like Chai Yunli. <laughs> really cute. I didn't catch all the details, but I do remember seeing him forge those amazing swords while the visitors watched with smiles on their faces. I used to believe that craftsmen brought happiness to others. The swords crafted by the Pyrogyre Forge are famed across the stars. They possess exceptional sharpness and invincibility. With these legendary weapons, even ordinary people can become skilled warriors, capable of overcoming the most formidable opponents. But then, he became obsessed with becoming a famed swordsmith and started crossing all sorts of lines. He forged cursed swords that should never exist. And all those people who desired those twisted swords started flooding into the palace. <sighs> However, just like Grandpa said, those who excel with the sword will eventually suffer by it. The palace was overrun with visitors from afar. Not Some left empty-handed. Others got swords that didn't fulfill their desires. And some even resorted to stealing. And in the midst of all the chaos my father created, he ended up being stabbed by one of the swords he forged. It was so sudden and unexpected. Everything went silent for a moment. All I could hear was the sound of bones breaking and blood pouring out. I was frozen in place, unable to move. It was only when my mother pushed me away from the deadly swing of the cursed sword that I managed to escape. I don't remember much after that, except for the pounding of my heart and the sound of my own gasps of breath. I could hear the smiths in the pyrogyre forge shouting, Run away, Yunli. And the screams of agony. My tears wouldn't stop. And I couldn't see anything. I kept gasping for air until I collapsed in a pool of blood. If General Huayan hadn't arrived in time, I probably wouldn't be here talking to you now. After that, General Huayan took me in and treated me like his own granddaughter. To me, he is a hundred times better than my sinful father. He taught me forging and swordsmanship. Hang Guang paid for his sins, but his troubled legacy must not go unchecked. According to the records, he forged a total of 1,382 Heliobus cursed swords, and 182 of them had unique designs. When I joined the Pyrogyre Forge for training, I made a vow to hunt down all those cursed swords. So far, I found 312 of them, and Guyan will be my 313th. Still quite a bit to go then. But uh, she's also still quite young, so... I'm not sure what her age exactly is supposed to be, but... Guessing her age, I'm actually already quite a lot, I would say. Especially if we like had to track them down and maybe even fight over them. Like all the other cursed swords, I'll separate it from the Heliobus. Then I'll melt it down and make it part of the Blade of Forged Remnants. 
I've said my piece now. Even though it'll be tough for Grandpa, I still have to melt down the sword. So, you're saying, even though Grandpa knew it was a cursed sword, he still chose it to be a prize because he thought it wouldn't cause any trouble? No. No matter how I think about it, something is definitely off. Grandpa didn't tell me anything about the ceremony. He must be hiding something. Besides, after our argument today, you want me to go back and talk to him now? <laughs> no way. At least not today. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> hmm. Oh, what Somehow, after talking to you, I feel like I've cooled off a bit. Well, I'll have an honest conversation with Grandpa tomorrow. And... And I won't take any action against Gu Yun until he gives me his reasons. <sighs> yeah. I shouldn't have done that in a public place. Anyway, thank you. <sighs> we'll catch up tomorrow. I should go back to the Palace of Astrum and tell General Huai Yan what happened at the Artisanship Commission. I actually like how to make your mate and take the place of the NPC by this whole cutscene. <laughs> nice. Um, sure, let's go back. Um, How do I get this treasure chest? What are you doing, kid? Huh. My granddaughter didn't cause any trouble, did she, young man? Sorry for all this trouble. You and Lee told you quite a bit. Now it's time for this old man to tell my side of the story. My story time! Uh, Han Guang was my beloved disciple. A rare genius not seen in the Pyro Gyre Forge since Ying Xing. However, talent can sometimes be a curse. He had an unusual fervor for forging, and he dreamed of forging a sword with self-awareness that surpassed that of humans. He believed it would make warriors invincible without any training. I guess you achieved According that. to him, while weapons of mass destruction like Juming flames and alchemical arrows can destroy many enemies, true victory lies with soldiers who fearlessly fight, ready to lay their lives on the line. Usually, Xianzhou swordsmiths infuse a basic level of awareness into their swords to make them easier to wield. But even then, Soldiers need to experience countless battles to overcome fear and sharpen their instincts. So... <sighs> By infusing Helio Bai into swords, he managed to forge weapons that could grant their wielders strength and valor, and even make decisions for them. However, weapons are different from regular tools. They are meant to kill. Plain and simple. After countless battles, all the anger, fear, and bloodlust are soaked up by the Heliobi within the swords. The soldiers wielding them not only gain strength, but they also become consumed by the malice, turning them into puppets possessed by the swords. No matter how noble Hong Guan's intentions were, those weapons soaked in blood turned into cursed swords eventually. Later, Outworlders got wind of what he was doing and encouraged him to keep forging cursed swords. They came up with all sorts of reasons, from taking back their kingdoms to slaying demons. And you know what happened next. 
That massacre took her parents' lives, and the lives of many craftsmen in the Pyrogyre Forge. Yun Li managed to survive, but she couldn't escape the horrors of that day. I mean, I can't fault her for being traumatized after such an event. Yes. I don't want her to spend her whole life trapped under her father's shadow. She doesn't deserve to carry the weight of his mistakes. Despite her vow to hunt down and wipe out all cursed swords, fulfilling that vow requires immense effort. Traversing the starry seas in search of the swords is like finding a needle in a haystack. Yeah, and she might not even be done of like finding all of like the plus 1300 of these because there could still be others doing the same thing her father did. Just producing even more and more cursed swords. And to reclaim those swords, she has to duel the bloodthirsty wielders, teetering on the edge of life and death. She has taken back over 300 cursed swords and has suffered the same number of fatal wounds. I took her in to give her a chance at a normal childhood, not to send her on a sword hunting journey. Whoever received more than 300 fatal wounds, she really, she really still has like perfect skin. You would think by how, by how much the skin she is also showing. It would see a lot more scars then. <laughs> it would be more fitting if she like was injured with like 300 fatal wounds. Even if she manages to melt down all the cursed swords one day, what will she do with her life after? Hu Yin is indeed one of the cursed swords forged by Han Guang. Very few swordsmiths could use Helio Bai as forging material, and Han Guang was one of them. His attempt came at a terrible cost. I thought this sword could be an opportunity. I wanted to tell her that her father wasn't all evil, that even the man she resents so much managed to forge a true sword of heroes. I also wanted to find a chance to tell her about the history and origin of this sword, but not during the ceremony. As you saw, it wasn't a good time. I've instructed the Artisanship Commission to keep the sword safe in the arsenal. If you have any doubts, feel free to ask the people involved. It will probably be Gongju and Ningja or something like that. I already suspected you were wanting to kidnap her. I guess we'll find out soon enough. Since my granddaughter mentioned talking to me tomorrow, I'll be waiting for her. By the way, you watched over her for quite some time. You must be exhausted, aren't you? Uh, really, he never gets tired. I mean, she is pretty. <laughs> I'll be counting on you then. Time to go back and find that class skipping March 7th. True, there also was that already clearly forgot about much. <laughs> when you turn to the express, you can face face with March 7th. Caught skipping class. Throwing milk tea and gossiping, time stepped away unnoticed. The next day arrived.
have I come uh, care to come? Okay. The way to the sword? Oh, it's lower to what the fuck. But yeah, but uh, Unity did say she wouldn't go after it, and I would be. I would trust her at least in that part, so. I mean, Argenti has been suspiciously eyeing the sword, the boxer uh, during the ceremony cried a lot, though I'm not sure if he would actually steal it or not. As, uh, as I already said, Argenti is like a complete mystery to me. Right, everyone is here. It's time for questioning. Yun Li, I'm sure you understand why the official called you here, right? Yeah, but I didn't steal the sword. Now is not the time to use your reputation like that. If we don't recover the sword, we will be breaking our promise to the Lawfu and betraying the delegation. We're counting on you to find the truth, Official Daha. Yes. It's my duty to thoroughly investigate the case. Even though Yun Li is firm in her words, we can't just rely on her testimony. <laughs> After everything, the sword still got stolen. They should have given it to me from the beginning. Yeah, better not to say it. In this case of Gu Yun's theft, everyone involved seems suspicious to some extent. Miss Yun Li is the main suspect. First, during the sword gifting ceremony, Yun Li openly expressed her intention to steal the sword. She even mentioned it multiple times. After the ceremony, she broke into the Artisanship Commission and destroyed Arumatons in an attempt to get the sword. Am I right? <laughs> That's true. The Realm Keeping Commission inspected the arsenal where Gu Yun was stored, and there were no signs of forced entry through the doors or windows. The only possible entrance or exit was a small window gap, just a few inches wide. It's like a lock to a murder mystery. Hey there, Professor. Hey, hey! It's just a theft. <laughs> the box containing Gu Yun was opened and the sword went missing. But none of the other swords in the room were touched. Which means. Well, uh, I do know about the box and the cursed sword. I mean, all of the, all of those who like attended the uh, ceremony knew about that. It's like a no secret. Exactly. The suspect had a clear motive and took only Gu Yun. So, besides the ceremony participants, only the delegation members had access to the sword. Mm. Hmm. In that case, why would they return it to the Xianzhou in the first place? Good question. Hmm. Huh. That makes sense. The delegation, led by the Knight of Beauty, delivered the sword to the Artisanship Commission. The craftsmen who received it testified that they didn't take anything from the arsenal. Hmm. Okay. Argenti? Oh, that Knight of Beauty. <laughs> He was with the delegation when they handed over the sword to the Artisanship Commission. Why does, like, everyone kind of have a bad, bad impression of Argenti? <laughs> I mean, he's a weirdo, but he's... At least he doesn't seem that bad. <laughs> he's just a weirdo. <laughs> Dude, what he we might not know, but who's really? the one who recognized the sword's origin on Kalevala and escorted it back to the Sienja? 
In other words, he's the one who made it possible for the sword to come home. Well, I'm doing fine. Thank you. What about you? So, he wouldn't have gone through all that trouble to bring it to the Law Fu if he wanted to keep the sword for himself, right? Fair enough. Could it be that I don't know? Why is the the, the, the option that Brockton is the story making us uh, ourselves the suspect. The fuck? Master Gongshu checked the work records, and I questioned all the craftsmen and apprentices who were on shift at the time. But I didn't find any suspicious individuals. So? Did you steal it? What do you mean with two, 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 two? Then stop choking around. <laughs> I can prove that he came to me after leaving the Artisanship Commission, so he couldn't have stolen the sword. To put it simply, not everyone who's seen the sword has been to the Artisanship Commission, and not everyone who might want the sword has seen it. Hmm. So, the only remaining suspect is Miss Yun Li. <laughs> Fair enough. He's quite quick to reward any other suspect, though. So... I didn't steal the sword. Well, when you've eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. Ah, uh, This crowd. Triggers memories. This is such an often used quote by um, by Jude from Tales of Exilia. He is using this quote way too often, <laughs> and I'm always reminded of Jude whenever I hear this quote. I do like this one though. <laughs> Though I really find it interesting to hear this crowd in this game out of all places, but hey. If you want to prove me wrong, better come up with some solid evidence. Let me gather my thoughts. I need to help Yun Lee clear her name. Did we miss any clues? I mean, we still could have like Forizons be at fault for this. Who can? Wait, were there any Foxians among them? I mean, among the, the among the visitors of the ceremonies, there were any, there were Foxians, yes, but not among the delegation. The container used to see Guyon is indeed a sight to behold. Its beauty is radiant, perhaps as well this very beauty that has drawn unwanted attention. Regardless, as one of the few pieces of physical evidence left at the scene, it must m it just might hold traces of the feet. Uh, such good exterior. So this case masterfully adorned with metal wire inlays traced the pattern of lotus flowers, subtly proclaiming its origin from the last year's central dreaming. It really is a nice design. The locking mechanism nested within the case remains intact, bearing no marks of external force or tempering. So the thief took the sword from the case without picking the lock. Or he knew how the mechanism worked. It was a few smears of red along the bottom of the case interior. It's hard to ignore as if a deliberate declaration of existence to those who are feeling the sword case. Okay. A few petals teetering on the brink of whirring were preci more precisely a single rose petal. It's two, but okay, not one. But that hints quite a lot at our Genti. Why is this flower petal inside the case? We we'll close the sword case and put it back. Yeah, 
Yeah, Rose Pet is uh, like a big hint for Gendy, and that uh, lock is still intact as well. Because it was a part of the delegation, you actually might know how it was locked in there. If you've found any clues, feel free to tell everyone. All right. Come back. Okay. Yun Lee says she didn't steal the sword, and I am willing to believe her. But I know well that Yun Lee can be impulsive. So if she did steal the sword on a whim, I won't show her any favors. You were with Yun Lee yesterday, young man. So you have the chance to prove her innocence. Is there anything you need to ask me? Do I feel like if she would have already stolen it, and then she would be also quite open about it. No, she was still mad at me, so she didn't come by. If she had come with you, she wouldn't be a suspect right now. Hmm. After the ceremony, Argenti carried the sword case, and together with the delegation, they were escorted by the Cloud Knights to the Artisanship Commission. The artisan there confirmed that the sword was safely stored. I'm counting on you, then. Okay. Yes, I received your message yesterday and went to the arsenal to check on it. But when I went back this morning, all that was left was the case. I don't know anything else, so asking more questions won't help, I'm afraid. However, as the Master Artisan of the Artisanship Commission, I've got to clarify something. Even though the sword was stolen, this commission is still highly secure. Yeah, yeah, it's for sure. Wait, no. I just remembered. My precious Arumatons were smashed. <sighs> it's not as secure as I think. <laughs> I mean, I did wreck Rick to point them to your room at home arsenal while not even probably threatening them to just like hastily and maybe in a bit more intimidating manner asking about it who could have thought that the mieka kifesa would be stolen and that the prime suspect is general huayan's granddaughter regardless we've accomplished our mission and now it's the sienjo's problem by the way, why did that girl call it a cursed sword? It's quite upsetting. That's enough, young man. Now let me get something straight. From Kaluvala, this sword has always been highly revered. The first master of the Mieka Kivesa slew countless demons and then passed it down to a line of wise monarchs. The monarchs would heed the guidance of the hero spirits within the sword and gain insight into defeating their enemies. What is, uh, Helio? <laughs> what? <laughs> ah, never mind. <laughs> the point is that the Mieka Kivesa did help the ancestors of Kaluvala build a strong foundation. It's definitely not a cursed sword. I could just, like, Take him to the fixed rules of the garden just to show him what he do, Brazil. Um, maybe get him like possessed by one just mm -hmm. for a uh, shits and giggles so he can experience it himself. You should just call Ho Ho for prevention measures before. I don't want to make things difficult. For official Dahau. Let's do this his way and prove my innocence. If I can find that cursed sword, I can prove my innocence right away. That's what I'm trying to figure out right now. There's something else bothering me. Why would the thief take the sword and leave the case behind? Did they melt down the sword like I wanted to? <laughs> yeah. Maybe. But if the case was too much trouble, wouldn't 
Shouldn't it be too conspicuous to carry around the sword like that? In plain sight? Not if you already would be carrying around other weapons. If you've found any clues, feel free to tell everyone. Thank you. But I'm not sure if I can convince Mr. Da how. A hundred percent sure. Fine. Let me go through my reasoning again, and you can interrupt if anything feels off. Hmm. Throughout the entire again. incident, there was only one suspect who broke into the Artisanship Commission, and that was Miss Yun Lee. Miss Yun Lee caused a ruckus at the Artisanship Commission trying to take away Gu Yun, but you stopped her in her tracks. After bidding farewell to you, Yun Lee pretended to leave but snuck into the arsenal alone, and stole Gu Yun. After Yun Li and I went our separate ways, I messaged Master Gongshu to inform him about the incident. And much later, Master Gongshu told me the sword was confirmed safe. So up until that point, Yun Li couldn't have stolen it. Uh, can I prove this? After bidding farewell I mean, to you, I Yun Li pretended testimony. to leave but snuck into the arse- Wait, you messaged Master Gongshu? I had no idea. Well, that's some solid proof right there. However, it only proves the sword wasn't stolen up to that point. Mm -hmm. I didn't do it! After bidding farewell to you, Yun Li pretended to leave, but snuck into the arsenal alone and stole Guyun. We haven't found any other suspects or evidence. Uh, can I prove this? Throughout the entire incident, there was only one suspect who broke in. Your statement isn't quite accurate. Argenti, the delegation members, and even me, we were all at the Artisanship Commission at some point. Yeah, that's uh... true. But they all left after delivering the sword. And the craftsman overseeing the handover confirmed that they couldn't have left with the sword. We looked into it as well. Before Gu Yun was handed over, the Psycrane at the entrance of the Artisanship Commission captured you leaving. But there's no record of Miss Yun Li leaving. Why would I dare leave through the main entrance after smashing the Arumatons? <laughs> True. Throughout the entire incident, there was only one suspect who broke into the Artisanship Commission. And that was Miss Yun Li. Hmm. I have also already used Gonshu's uh, testimony. Miss uh. Yunli caused a ruckus at the Artisanship Commission trying to take away Gu Yun, but you stopped her in her tracks. What Da Hao said seems right. Exactly. So at least Yunli didn't steal the sword at that time, because we were at the Arumaton warehouse. If your testimony is reliable. I'm not implying anything, but we need to scrutinize every piece of evidence. Miss Yun Li caused a ruckus at the Artisanship Commission trying to take uh... away Gu Yun, but you stopped her in her tracks. After bidding farewell to you, Yun Li pretended to leave, but snuck into the arsenal alone and stole Gu Yun. We haven't found any other suspects or evidence. Looks like you're missing some crucial evidence. There are no signs of the arsenal being broken into, so... The only real evidence is the sword case. No. The fact that there are no signs of a break-in is suspicious in itself. Which piece of evidence should I use to convince Dahao? We haven't found any other suspects or evidence. I carefully that? examined the lock of the sword case, and there were no signs of tampering or damage. What does that mean? As to why the case was never locked in the first place, only the people who delivered it to the Artisanship Commission would know. Plus, I found something else inside the case. Which piece of evidence should I use to further convince Daha? We haven't found any other suspects or evidence. I found this in the crevice at the bottom of the case. <laughs> A rose petal? Huh. 
I must have missed it during the search. But why was there a pedal inside the case? I don't know. But I do know that wherever that Knight of Beauty goes, he always leaves behind a trail of rose petals that's almost impossible to clean up. <laughs> I like it how they actually make it a real thing. My thoughts are a mess. Let me sort them out. The sword case was never locked, which is evidence that only someone who delivered the sword could have done that. And the rose petal was probably left behind by that knight of beauty. But how did he manage to take the sword from the Artisanship Commission? Why did he steal it after returning it here? And why would he leave that petal in the case? Hmm... Actually, there might be a thing that Argeni might be possessed by Hilebas at the moment because they did say he pulled this uh, sword from the stone. I know. Guyum flew out of the case on its own. The Knight of Beauty only unlocked the box to aid its escape. Don't be ridiculous. How can a sword escape from a case on its own? Or is that? Hmm. You've never seen a flying sword before? I, uh... I've only heard about the Mieka Kifesa being able to fly in Legends. But even if it could fly, why would the Knight of Beauty do this? Like I said, the sword contains a Heliobus. Argenti must have been under the control of the sword. Maybe he was under its control even before you arrived on the Lofu. Official Dahao. Where can we find that knight? Uh, let me see. Uh, uh. The docking location of Argenti's ship, the one and only. Let's go. We've got to find Argenti before that sword completely takes over his mind. Is this ship really called the one and only? I have to remember back to version 1.6 when you first met him. Uh, Let was me already stay here a there, little longer in this was. body. Success or failure? You can't change it. No Is there an interesting what name for a ship, though? Especially for a uh, Knight of the Beauty, who was like the only one remaining, as far as we know. Why is it your chair? In the corner of Sarkin is a good cave, and you stump upon night clad in silver shimmering armor. Blah 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 blah. 15th day of month X. Fuck. I've been waiting for you here for quite a while. Night of Beauty. You're the one who stole Guyon, right? Hand it over. You have no idea how dangerous that cursed sword is. Dangerous? In my humble opinion, the real danger is always the hand wielding the weapon. Yes, I did. As a Drilla's knight, I've sworn to live in poverty, and I abhor theft. I had to leave behind a rose petal in order to keep my promise to Master Guyan and uphold my knightly oath. What? What do you mean? I agreed to assist Master Guyan in its escape from the Sienjo. As the person who pulled it from the stone monument, captivated by its beauty, I must not let it down. I couldn't stay in the arsenal to convince the craftsmen, nor did I want to take the sword like a thief. That's why I left behind a small piece of evidence that pointed to my identity in the hope of an open and honest conversation with you. <laughs> Quite a roundabout Whatever way to throw it. Whatever your are, you're planning to take the cursed sword away from the Sienjo. Hand it over to me. Back then, it was the beauty of Master Guyun that impressed me. So I willingly embarked on the journey to return the sword. But unfortunately... Master Guyan's homeland is no longer the ideal place for it to return to. As a knight of beauty, I must not abandon it halfway. Oh no. 
He's completely captivated by the power of that cursed sword. The solution is right in your hand. Captivated? No, I am touched by Master Gullion's flawless beauty. To be honest, I'm confused why none of you can understand this sword. This is quite heartrending. I've already made up my mind to take Master Gullion away from this Yenjo. That cursed sword has messed with your ability to think. But I'll break you free from its grip. I'll shatter its illusion. And the sword itself. Fair lady, if you're intent on taking away this person, this sword that is under my protection, please engage me with a fair duel according to knightly etiquette. As fair a enough. representative of this duel, I, Argenti, challenge you. I swear on the spirit of chivalry, in front of Adrilla the Beauty, that I will represent Master Guyan in this duel. If I win, you will allow Master Guyan to leave the Sienjo with me. And if you best me, Miss Yunlei, I'll accept my defeat and turn Master Guyan over to you. Do you accept my challenge, Miss Yunlei? Fine. Let's see whose desire is stronger. Your desire to take it away, or my desire to hunt down all cursed swords. Show me what you've got. You're not going to use Guyan to fight for victory? Well, I know a thing or two about sword play. In a proper duel like this, a knight should rely on the skills he's honed day and night. You're a real weirdo. Tardiary is a weirdo. Some value, I suppose. Eternal. Stay put. Get that rise to the Stay challenge. Stay step. The mood is set. Let the show begin. You're fighting a gentleman. Put forth all your might. Fight to live. Rise to the challenge. Rise to the challenge. I'm gonna hold everyone back again! Protect me! Protect me! Great teamwork! <laughs> Set to the sea! Go Rise to the sea! Let's sign the Fiends or devils! So we're gonna Trust raise them all! Every petal all will be swept away by the wind. To the challenge. I'm scared. Stay kept up. Rise to the challenge. Bear witness. To the honor. mood is set. Let the show begin. Yeah. Uh. The flesh wound. Come on. Existence is unity. Get there. Take your positions. Let the duel commence. Confess. Stay Catch away. Up. Until everything burns to ashes! Set to the sea, go play! Grace and elegance. Swept away by the wind. Let's I know. Recalibrate all your might. <laughs> Fiends or devils. I'll crush them all. The mood is set. Let the show begin. Protect, protect me. 
Great teamwork. Recalibrating. Firefly type fight to live! Let the duel commence. Put forth all your might. <laughs> Eternal. I'm gonna hold everyone back again! What a kind of how much damage he's doing, really. Dreams do come true. Uh -huh. Just let the show begin! We can restart it if we change the lineup and do it with Ian Lee. Or we'd be more fitting to do it with Ian Lee, really. Um. I just have to check uh, again how her ultimate actually really works. Or like her counter stuff. Um. Should I keep running my support? A bit more protection would be nice. Mm. I don't have any like physical fire here, do I? I also find it interesting that like Jauger is actually like supposed to be some kind of healer, but then he's not having like any heals in his damage in like his kit, but <laughs> just burn debuffs. Mm. I can't keep large off. You're not going to use Kuyen to fight for victory? Well, I know a thing or two about swordplay. In a proper duel like this, a knight should rely on the skills he's honed day and night. Mm. 
increase the damage to the next combo by 90 percent and don't take a combo effect. Increase the parry effect of all combos to get rid of parries in turn. Just, um, from the text, I don't really understand what your mechanic was. You're a like, real weirdo. What are stacks meant again? Uh, but yeah. Behold the symbol of pure. Come on, Rory. And Yang. Some value, I suppose. Existence is unity. A gentleman, put forth all your might. Yes, you uh, quick divination. Eternal step, dead return. She's getting a point, dear. Every petal all will be swept away by the wind. <laughs> There's more to life. Bear witness. You chose the wrong enemy. Receive divinity. Reciprocity. Just repay. Excellent. Within the self, and strike! Ugh. Converge and await! Yes. Human creations! <laughs> Rise to the challenge! Let the duel commence! Let thy lord! <laughs> yes, you! Flesh wound! Some value, I suppose. you off put forth all your might right up we came together how does it work i don't i don't know how this works i don't understand her limit <laughs> To the challenge. Strike! Uh, you chose the wrong enemy. <laughs> Eternal step. Dead return! Melt! I see through you. Oh. Descend to Earth! There's more to life. Eternal. Every petal all will be swept away by the wind. Behold, the symbol of pure. Gather as one. I'll see you off. Receive divinity. Repay! You're fighting a gentleman. Put forth all your might. <laughs> yes, you! Some value, I suppose. <laughs> Strike! <sighs> Melt! Yeah. See through clouds! <sighs> Bear witness. Order! 
Human creations. There's more to life. Rise to the challenge. Let the duel commence. Let thy will. Enjoy yourself. Right on top. Flesh wound. Yes, you. Descend to earth. Okay. Your is a word, I think. I still just got in this to try to understand more how her decks and ultimate works. Existence is unity. Every petal all will be swept away by the wind. Put forth all your might. Enjoy me. <laughs> right on time. Yes, you. You chose the wrong enemy. Rise to the challenge. Eternal slip. The dead return! Strike! Uh, quick divination. Together as one. Melt! Put forth all your might. Uh, weave through clothes! Grace and elegance. I'll see you off. Melt! Rise to the challenge. Slap! Uh, Bring mountain! Uh, for chivalry. Bam. I've lost. According to the rules of a knight's duel, I should keep my promise and hand over the sword to you. But before I do that, I hope that you, as the winner, might have the mercy and listen to Master Guyan's past experiences. This sword has been cursed since the day it was forged. Place it in front of me and let me destroy it. Do what she says, Knight. <laughs> but you've done so much for me already. It's time for me to face her alone. The train draws the fourth and ancient swords guard from countless battles. I'm weary of fighting. I just want to share my past with you. To explain why I wanted to escape. After that, I'll leave my destiny in your hands. Are you afraid to witness my past, little girl? Afraid? <laughs> Well, you do have a different aura from other cursed swords. But you're just trying to use my curiosity to lure me in. Well, you know best that a single touch won't snatch away anyone's sanity. <clears throat> Fine. Show me your past. I want to see two. It's already impossible to contact the main Cloud Knight forces. What awaits me will be a long and lonely war. Follow me. Is this your memory? Hmm. Are we using Bellabog area for that? It's so cold here. I didn't feel it when I was in the thick of battle, but now it's freezing me to the bone. <sighs> You're indeed a masterpiece from the Xianzhou Juming. If you hadn't taken control of my body, I probably would have been decapitated in that fight. Quiet and stay alert. Boris and wolf troopers never give up the hunt. <laughs> hey, just relax a bit. It 
It's been over 300 days since we were both stranded on this planet. The transmitter never rings, so I guess we can't count on that anymore. The people on this planet still use beasts to pull their carts. Obviously, there's no way they can help us fix the star skiff. <sighs> Looks like we're stranded on this forsaken planet for the rest of our lives. Oh, the rest of a Sienjo native's life could be terribly long. Are you feeling any desperation, all by yourself in this hostile world? Yeah, a bit. Perhaps. When things get too rough for you to handle, just leave everything to me. No need to carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. Yeah, sure. If I really can't handle things anymore, I'll leave my body to you. But now is not that time. Do you really think you can oppose an entire force and army with your limited skills? What are you holding out for? It's true that I'm stranded here. But it seems like that Borison pack is in the same boat. By the way, Guyan, do you know what a seed is? A seed may seem insignificant, but with careful cultivation and time, it can grow into a huge, unwavering tree. You said that the rest of a Sienjo native's life could be terribly long. You're right. That's why I intend to plant a seed named Resistance here, and nurture it for the rest of my life. I want to show the people of this land how to defend themselves against those monsters. I can already see the seed in the eyes of those people. <laughs> you really think you can do it? Why not just give me control, and we can revel in the bloodbath together? What was the memory I just saw? It was a memory of me and a Cloud Knight, stranded on an unfamiliar planet. We crash-landed on a planet occupied by Borison. Just the two of us. Oh. I can feel that it was a lonely war. I just running the same path the entire time. I'm alive. But all the young people in the village. They died. They died for you. They died because of your big promises. Promising them a life free from the Borison. I tasted their despair before death. They didn't see it coming, and neither will you. We can't stay here. Let's move on to the next village. Why? What's the point? You and your sorry excuse for an army have been fighting for over three decades, and you haven't won a single battle. What you're sowing is not resistance, but despair. This world is hopeless. It's completely infested with packs of Borison. You've seen their numbers, and you know their methods. And those commoners you've put your hopes in, they just kneel down and worship the monsters devouring their children and families, calling them their Beastmasters. You beheaded one of the Beastmasters for their sake, but they turned on you because they were scared of the forest and taking revenge. You remember all that, right? I... I do. I remember my first death. The Borison <laughs> cut off my head. But I also remember that if it weren't for a brave youngster who risked his neck to reattach my head and give me a proper burial, I would have disappeared completely. I remember everything the people did for me. They left food at the entrance of my cave, fixed my fur coat, and some even joined my resistance. The rest of the Sienjo native's life is still terribly long, and there will be new youngsters who will stand beside me in battle. Time is on our 
our side. <sighs> you said it was a lonely war. No. It wasn't a war filled with loneliness, but with despair. So much despair that I don't want to ever taste it again. <laughs> Are we really walking the same short path every single time? I'm leaving. Where are you going, your highness? I'm returning to my homeland. A distant place beyond the sky. I'm not coming back. But what should we do with you gone? What, what if those wolf demons show up again? They won't, my child. You've wiped out the last of them. But before I go, I need you to do one thing for me. Even though the wolf demons are gone, new monsters will appear in this world. Soon, a demon will appear, donning golden branches and knowing only bloodshed. However, fear not, my children. Is he talking about, like, the Beast of Abundance? I'm entrusting you with this sword that's been with me in countless battles. Use the skills I've taught you over the years, and you'll surely defeat that last demon. But that's not all. I need you to construct a stone monument for me. It must be large and sturdy enough to seal the remains of that demon forever. This is a debt you owe me, and you must fulfill it. Do you understand? You lied to them. And you lied to me, too. Oh? You promised that you'd give your body to me when you couldn't handle things anymore. Well, this Sienjo native's life has finally come to an end. My old friend. How about one last chance for revenge? Come and bid me farewell for the final time. He had long since come to some understanding. I could sense a mix of intricate emotions flowing out. It wasn't bloodlust. Or anger or fear. What he had left for you was hope. They've learned how to fight monsters, but there's still one last monster lingering in the world. Kill it, my old friend. Uh, uh yeah. Okay, I know what he's referring to. He's about to get Mara's truck. Of course. He left me there without ever looking back. Thank you, my old friend. Heliobi can taste human emotions. How do my emotions taste? My old friend. <sighs> a hint of bitter compassion and a touch of scalding courage. Your heart's deepest desire is to end war once and for all. Now, the war is finally over. Can you hear? <laughs> Even though you can't hear me anymore, my old friend, I'll do everything I can 
to bring an end to all conflicts in this world. So, this is the past of the Call of Fallen people's Sword of Heroes? You helped the people of that world bring an end to war? No, I did not. I am a weapon, and I only became the cause of more conflicts. Countless monarchs of Kalevala saw me as a symbol of kingship endowed by nature, and they waged wars in order to possess me. I grew tired of their wicked intentions. I didn't want to kill for anyone anymore. So I returned to the stone monument where my master was buried. And since then, no one was able to remove me from it. But you allowed Argenti to take you away? Because even after all this time, I still wanted my master to come home. Aww. During the sword gifting ceremony, I felt anguish when I learned that I would be handed over to the most skilled sword master and once again become a tool for killing. My master had engraved his deepest desire into my blade. End war. As a weapon, my purpose was predetermined from the start. I had to become a deadly sword that would relentlessly hack and kill. But once I fulfilled my mission, would I have the right to choose my own destiny like he did? So, I asked the Knight of Beauty to help me break free from this never-ending cycle of bloodshed. These... Thousands of years have naturally turned into memories of mine. I think I understand the beauty the knight was talking about now. I don't want to be a sword that brings death. My war ended long ago. The years spent as a tombstone were my finest. Anderson. I've told you everything about my experience with Master Gurian on Kalevala. And now, I'm sure that Miss Yun Li is as moved by the sword's flawless beauty as I was back then. Even though I had heard the legends of this sword from the delegation, delving into its memories was still fascinating. Yun Li. I trust Gu Yin's experiences have changed your mind. <sighs> That's why Grandpa hid it from me. So I wouldn't make a hasty decision. I always thought. A cursed sword infused with a heliobus would only bring rage and slaughter. I never thought someone could leave behind the desire to end war and even change the nature of the cursed sword. My position was too extreme. Guyan is truly a sword of heroes. I. I apologize to all of you for my behavior. I'm sorry. Now that we've proven Miss Yoon Lee's innocence and found the sword, should we now return it to the arsenal? No. I'm still going to melt down this sword. I knew that. <laughs> I 
I've heard your true desires, Guyan. I can sense that you're tired of being a sword. Constantly serving new masters and fighting battles you no longer want to be part of. Right? But being a sword is my destiny. I'm doomed to serve some master and fight battles endlessly. Can the wind choose to stop blowing? Can a cloud choose to stop drifting? No. It's the same for me. A creation with a predetermined destiny. You give it to me, I would use it as a cooking knife. <laughs> 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 if he doesn't want to kill anyone, then let's just use it as a cooking knife, I guess. <laughs> That's not true, Guyan. That nameless swordmaster shaped his own destiny. So you can too. I just can't picture my destiny being anything other than that of a sword. Do you remember when you stood alone in front of the Swordmaster's stone monument? People admired you because you carried the memories of the hero. You were no longer a sword. You were a memorial. Later, True. as I became worn and weathered, the gentle wind would pass through the hollows of my body, creating melodic tones that echoed in the distant mountains. I became a musical <laughs> instrument then. Oh, I miss those times. <laughs> okay. Just, just this whole thing together. A sword being happy about becoming a music instrument just sounds. <laughs> it just sounds really hilarious, to be honest. <laughs> Mm, okay, sure, sword. Sure. Can a creation become what it wants to be? The answer is yes. I'll grant your wish, Guyan, and transform you into something different. Something different? But this is the price for the war dance. If the Kalevalan delegation finds out. It... Please, say something, General Huayen. Then Yuni just has to win the war dance. Well, my granddaughter has always been stubborn. Are you really sure about this, Yuni? What do you all think? Hmm... Fulfilling Master Guyan's wishes is the reason I came to the Xianzhou. With Adrilla's blessing, you could turn Master Guyan into a plow. But as long as it fulfills his wish to end war, I support it fully. Then, I'll leave it to you, Yunli. When you make your way to Dozenger's commission, Pented Armor is seeking the use of their forging credits. It's been an honor. Getting to know you like this. The honor is mine. Thank you, Yunli. So what are you forging it into? <sighs> Why the long face, my child? Are you feeling regret, perhaps? You were completely determined when melting down the sword. So... Why the sudden change of heart? Grandpa... I melted down the prize for the war dance. How are you going to explain this to the lawful? Fair enough. Oh? Am I hearing right? This little girl is worried about her grandpa. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. <sighs> if only I'd talked to you from the beginning, Grandpa. Maybe things wouldn't have escalated like this. But at least Guyan got what it wanted. I have no regrets there. <sighs> when it comes to swords, you... You and your father are cut from the same cloth. 
So, are you planning to continue melting down the rest of Hongguang's swords? Yeah. Guyan is unique. But the other cursed swords are still too dangerous for anyone to handle. But maybe I'll try to be more patient next time. Be more patient. Well said. Remember what you learned today, because there will be many more situations in the future that will require you to be more patient. <laughs> Understood. But what about the prize? Well, ever since you showed up at the ceremony, I had a hunch. So I prepared another sword as a backup plan. And don't worry, this one has nothing to do with Heliobi. I'm not even surprised with that. That's perfect. By the way, the ambassador from Kalevala and that knight went to Aram Alley. They're looking for a spot to honor the hero. Why don't we go take a look together? Sure. I do still wonder what he was forged into. Or is it just like a metal blob of metal now? Oh, General Huayan. What brings you here? It has been melted into a music instrument. <laughs> <laughs> okay, betting. Well, my granddaughter was inspired by the heroic legends told by the Mieka Kivesa, so she dragged me here to take a look. I come from a long line of Kalevalan monument keepers. For generations, my family has guarded the stone monument left behind by the, the nameless hero. Over the centuries, a golden tree sprouted from under the monument, and its branches have never withered. We Kalevalans see it as proof of the hero's existence. Before leaving Kalevala, I took a branch from that golden tree, hoping to plant it here to represent the hero returning to his homeland. That sounds good. We Xianzhou people don't make coffins or set up memorials, so I'm sure he would be happy to rest here where life is bustling. The hero had asked our ancestors to carve something into the monument, so I made a copy of it too. While the inscription is pretty worn with age, perhaps you can still make out some of it. I have drifted far from my homeland and am on the brink of death. Yet, I take solace in having honorably fulfilled my duties. Should you feel compassion for me, kind traveler, please take a handful of soil hence and bring it back to the lawful. <laughs> Mr. Pavo, I wonder if that hero ever left a name in your history. I apologize, but the hero's epic battles happened long ago, and he did not leave any name for us to call him. But in our mythology, he came from the heavens, and so we call him the Cloud Knight. Well, he was a Cloud Knight after all. Welcome home, Cloud Knight. Now, you can also rest here. Can you still talk though? An enemy is unassuming ancient Eugene. His body and strings appear to be crafted from a unique kind of metal. Even without the human's touch, it occasionally bursts out notes as if humming an untuned melody for someone unseen. I mean, it's obvious as that uh, it's Guyu, but hey. Hmm. I'm feeling a bit emotional. I'd like to stay here for a while. Thank sure. you for your guidance. I I'm truly grateful. 
by any chance, would you be interested in taking sword lessons with me? Like March? <laughs> May not have a baseball bat. All right. Uh, good. Then we have that. Then what am I gonna do next? I usually get still some exploration to do. So maybe we can catch up on that. Um, and yeah, there's also like actually some exploration here now with the Shackling person, but... I feel like there might still be more to it further down the line as well. So I'm gonna save it for now. Mm. So let me actually check... Kind of corny. First of all, I should go to this dude and buy more ID tokens. After that, we can actually I'm, con I'm hungry. continue on looking for the penny corny areas, which I haven't finished yet. A bottle of salt. Because I'm also still missing some eidolons for uh, how many trade layers of Which I wanna get. Um, also, uh, team line up. Do I still have like one with? No. Then let's do one with. Topaz. Come, our It actually would be fitting no to do a party like yet. this. I do think they would synergize quite well, actually. Oh, Lady Jade herself has come. <laughs> What's wrong? You don't trust me. Mm. What am I giving them a healer though? Mm. Why am I not give them a healer actually? Just for the fun of it. Um, I do actually want to use the party though. Mm. So we could try a stream done. We have that one done. Not done. There are which dreamscape. Uh, let's say we started here, I guess. Or actually, no, where was the bird? The bird was here. <coughs> Wait, this is already off? Take guide and talk. Okay, where is it? Up there. Okay. I'm just gonna take this and maybe. As help. Also, you just need to. Wait, well, also. Okay, you do need to check for lordly trash cans as well. 
We'll do, do around all this place first. Is there any kind of trash can here? <coughs> I was seeing any trash can so far. gonna be running around this whole place anyway so just a dream for him dude nothing okay <sighs> ah. there's our draw though in the world. Rest the need all together. The dice have been cast. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. Where there's a will, there's a way. Don't let me down. Easy, Numby. Go, Numby! Uh, watch your head. Had your best. Thanks, the dice have been cast. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. All in. <laughs> Give an inch and they'll take a mile. <laughs> Let the valuation begin. Bending the rules. Better cut her losses. Watch your head. We? There's no backing out now. For me or you. Sure, I'll play along. There's a will, there's a way. Who's the little backstabber? Project Rap. Um, good. Find me more good stuff, Nambi. Have you any act of it? Night. Stars echo. Welcome to my Don't let me down. Easy, Numby. Liquidation. Spin freely. The dice have been cast. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. Watch your head. <laughs> no dirty tricks, all right. <laughs> I'm using Robin's already. Project you Rats. can like her singing. <laughs> Maybe I should run around with my car right now. It might help with this. The 
market is a price. Investing in victory means playing the long game. I hit the mark. Ah. Uh. I always deliver. where we usually come out on land, but no. And I also gotta find these lowly trash cans, I shouldn't forget about it. What is it doing with this kid? It was like an ugly kid, but they always looked like kids to me. The dice have been cast. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. The market is unpredictable. Right! Investing in victory means playing the long game! Where there's a will, there's a way. Don't let me down. Let the valuation begin! <laughs> Uh, it's okay. Watch it's your head. Okay. Where there's a will, there's a way. Huh. Easy, Numby. Side quest. Okay. So is it down or up? Just gonna check the the camera level here as well. I should just go through it again just to see if there's like any chests or shot I may have missed here. That's like the thing. Just makes it really hard to go through these players and check everything.
Where is Okay, the navigation is not is not helping. Because it just It's confusing. Oh okay, I'm just back in this room now. Alright. Something here though. This is like this this Hanu area. Maybe I'll take it off. Watch your head. Spend freely. Harmony and unison. Let the valuation begin. No dirty tricks, all right. Better cut our losses. There's a will, there's a way. Ha! Who's the little backstabber? <laughs> it's on me. Who knows if it would give me more shields? <laughs> Watch your head. May song bring us victory. First. Bust, or maybe I'll take it off. Mm. Limit 
turret. Time for a lesson. Watch your head. No dirty tricks, all right? I just let me start it. Sure, I'll play along. It's on me. Yeah, I should put the leader in this power. I really should. Mm. Oh, a little extra for the quarterly bonus. It just put. Actually, in case I'm just died, I can just like you each uh, just have black fighter rest um so she's more of a safe bet. Um Okay, the design is this but It's also a puzzle, dude. So can I open you? Nope, not you. <laughs> Have I just not never visited the D room here? Looks like it. She certainly does not rest on better entry. Sad. I always deliver. We have it. There's no backing out now. For me or you. Let the valuation begin. She doesn't trigger Nambi before she play E. Oh. Oh. The market is on right. Investing in victory means playing the long game. <laughs> What's in your prescription? Guess I owe you one. <laughs> Easy, Nambi. Live a trip. Stand by with Bailu. <laughs> Project wrapped. Okay. Where can I go from here now? I mean, I could go back from where I came, I guess. But the shop really. Oh, what is it? Can open that door now. I 
which would just give me back to the main room. <sighs> and leave me free bubbles for this room. For the next for this path. Alright. This one. So not me. I just cannot go for that. Because we're not really having any more eyes. This doesn't even make a pro connection to there. Uh, I don't really, it's just useless over there. seeing I was supposed to do this. This wouldn't make much sense either. Oh, it does. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay, that one was a bit more tricky. Hard work pays off. this then I'm gonna leave you and if I leave you I can go straight through here and activate this one an inch and they'll take a mile. Don't let me down. We? There's no backing out now. For me, me or you. The market is unpredictable. Right! Investing in victory means playing the long game! That's gone. Can't go there. I only really have one away. Okay. Oh, a little extra for the quarterly bonus. And dreamscape. Huh? going and I went back out huh yes I did really go back out and okay We still got this Hanu, Hanu puzzle here though. And how do I get there though? Ah, with the Hanu. A bird up here. Ah, I'll actually have to pass us for all these. Um, it goes here, probably. Um, this goes there. Then you should go there. Go down here. Yeah. There you go. Could have just picked you. Okay, I can't even this from you. I 
just need to sneak there. Easy enough. I'm not over here. Uh, okay, you returned me to the entrance? Okay, I guess I already got everything from you. One more treasure chest from somewhere, though. <sighs> the question is from where? Um, maybe just will return to the bird and see where the next one is. Right here. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. It's even harder to spot when there's already a lot of origami birds here. Flamboyant Mr. Teacup. Navigate, sure. Where we started. I was already here earlier. Did you just miss it? Yeah, okay, okay, you didn't just run straight through you. Ah, I see where it is. Why are you ambushing me? Huh. 
for a lesson. <laughs> we? There's no backing out now. For me or you. Run. <laughs> Head your back, huh? Is there actually another path I haven't went from here yet? Yeah, this path. Then it's just... Ah, uh, yeah. I already was here. I guess I'm already back here to the bird right here. Let's just go back to it. Screens always. It's also just right up there. What the hell? Why are so many right next to it? And why have I not seen them? Yeah, also, it's once you know it, it's also quite easy to spot. Oh, okay. We have got every bird at least. I really want to, like, um, because I do not know where the trash cans are. Is there supposed to be one right here? Ah, it's on the, Hi, it's the upper speaking. floor. You have it's on the upper floor. Okay, it's right next to the bar. It's still gonna run through the area though. Check it out a bit more. Because you also need to find a throttle still and another treasure chest. There's also nothing. Ok, 
cannot take the lift in the current state. Okay. Let's just take the door on the other end, I guess. For this despawns you God Don't let me down. Let the valuation begin. Liquidation <laughs> Not bad. The market is on price! Investing in victory means playing the bond game! Spend freely. <laughs> Where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> Easy <enough. laughs> Watch your head. just leads me back to here. What was the pathway to actually getting there then? Huh? I'm confused. Let's just go from here where I know the trash can is. spot uh. I always deliver the dice have been cast bust or maybe I'll take it off not doing a lot of break damage. Never hurts to have a plan. Everything is much better. Give an inch and they'll hedge your bets. Lost it all. Fuck you. <gasps> Fuck you. <laughs> uh, God. Her body which was a bit better at breaking. Actually, nah, this should, this should be able to easily break stuff. Um, Roger, we'll here. An enemy worthy of you? 
because of that I'm just a pure quantum. Just for uh, <laughs> 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 who from breaks them? <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, Fushu and Kipper and Burgess. So much for that. <laughs> uh, nice. Like that, huh? Uh, only a scratch. I see through you. Converge and await. So, still need to find some stuff, though. Um, question is, where do you find it? Mm. Is that treasure chest? Question now though is where do I find the Trotha? Just really go into ways. Uh, then
What is this? Just ignore it. Okay. Just give you this. I'm not even sure what it does. Uh, on now. It's so quick to like to lose your orientation in this place. What the hell? Any sort of over here? Maybe? Don't know. Hmm. My daughter detached cleaning system is not going off, so. Also, wasn't there like a, like a TikTok clock thingy here that wanted stuff? That was that one again. Was it down the elevators? I don't fucking know anymore. This place is confusing as hell. It's easier to go through here when you do it the first time because you can only get like open up one path at a time, but. Quarterly 
Where's the trawler though? Uh, it's just big pathway and just the dead end. I'll check out the dead end first. Oh no, this is not the dead end, this is where I came from. Uh, we're just hoping it will be along this path somewhere. Oh, it actually is. <laughs> Sweet. I was just about to say if I should take even longer I find this, I'm actually just look it up. Easy, Numbi. Liquidation. Head your bets. It's on me. Let me tend your wounds. Let the valuation begin. Go, Nappy! Oh. Just a graze. Time for a lesson. Easy, Nappy. Need a doctor? Wait, I actually might not be able to do this. Let the valuation begin. Yeah. Uh, this party is not nice for actually dealing with stuff. <laughs> Which is kind of annoying. Divination. Grace and elegance, eternal. What are you made of? Strike! Yes, you! Descend to Earth! Grace and elegance. Okay. Forged. All are imbued into the sword. I'm glad we got the trawler. Next area. Or do I want us to do more one more area because we run and run this area quite a lot? This one is a short one, come on. Um Pavilion. Or is this actually a lot bigger? Uh, yeah, no, it looks bigger. It will take work a bit more longer, and I do not want to stream for that much longer. Mm. So, yeah, we just. We just. I guess we kind of save more stuff for later. <laughs> I still have a lot not checked out yet. Maybe I'll just also do it on my own town, maybe. I'll have to see. I'll have to see. But... 
Mm, let's check golden armor. We did get some stuff at least. Oh, this will also already be enough for the Eidolons. Time for a break. Silent mode. Oh, come on, face, buddy. Cheer up. Kick up. Yep. Oh boy, I need too much this time. At least I can get the Eidolons. That's just what I actually really wanted. Those also were gonna go after the birdies if they give me like nice light counts. So who's this much else? Uh, uh, whatever it is, okay. Okay. How many trailblazer there you are? Unknown to each other, yet united in purpose. We make the same choices. Unknown to each other, yet united in purpose. We make the same choices. Yeah, it's not more cocker stuff and everything. Good film of finality. Huh. This is a bit of stuff I actually have to check out, but hey. I will leave it at that for today. So. Alright. What is your plan? It's a weird looking game, but sure, you can go ahead. Mm. Let's go on Raider. Stranger. <laughs> Alright, I'm not sure what game she is playing. Actually, you have a nice stream, it's called apparently. Looks like I don't really like some kind of indie game, so we can download it to check that out. But other than that, it was just a new story and a bit more of exploring, nothing that special, but hey, I hope you still enjoyed it nonetheless. <sighs> if you did, support is appreciated. If you did not, you can always give me a feedback as well to make me do stuff. And with that, I hope I will be seeing you next time. Be nice over and wait. And until then, bye bye.